Is Kamala Harris going to be the next president of the United States, whether before the election or after the next election? In this video, we're going to be going over all of the astrology of pretty much what Kamala Harris is doing. The reason I'm making this video, or I should say this podcast, is this is a topic I've talked a little bit about in the past couple of years since Biden has become president, but more specifically because just the other day, oh, let me get my actual camera here. Just the other day, Kamala Harris decided to say that she is, Kamala Harris says she's prepared to serve as president if necessary. This is an article from The Guardian. And why would Kamala Harris say that? She took that oath. She's the vice president. Of course, she's ready. I truly believe that this is a <clears throat> warming things up for us, getting us prepared for something. Now, the reason I'm making this is because I have predicted in the past that I do not believe Joe Biden will outlast or go through this whole term as president. I made a prediction, God, in 2021, um, I don't remember what videos, I brought it up a few different times, and if you know exactly what videos I said this in, I would love if you could share them uh, in the comments below. But I made a a, a, a a prediction that Joe Biden was going to pass away or die um, on July, I think the date I said was July 6th, 2022. And the reason I predicted that day specifically was Mars was going to conjoin his moon. Of course, I was wrong about that. He did not die. However, he did get COVID on that day, which I did think I was like, okay, I was a little wrong, but I, I, I got a day right for a health event. So anyway, uh, in this video, pretty much I want to talk about... Um, the context for all of this, because this is not a typical American election. This is not a typical American presidency where the astrology shows a really big change in the next few years. And I want to make this video to provide the context of that, but then also go over the astrology of both Joe Biden's chart and Kamala Harris's chart, because I do believe Kamala Harris will find herself in the um, president seat uh, before the next election. So let's go over it. So the first thing that we have to talk about for context here is the 2020 Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Let me go ahead and pull up the chart here for this. So if you're not familiar already, back in 2020, the very, very end of 2020, we had a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. What is that, Cameron? Well, that is, of course, when Jupiter and Saturn conjoin each other. Uh, why is that a big deal? Well, because that happens every 20 years. And in like ancient astrology, it was always symbolic of like, you know, new political systems, new kings, new rulership, things like that. But what made this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction so important was that it was, um, as you can see here, we're looking at December 19th, 2020. This was also the day that the emergency use, emergency use authorization came for the inoculations. It's also a very important part of all of this. But uh, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction happens every 20 years. However, every 200 years, Jupiter and Saturn conjoin in the same element of zodiac signs. So for the past 200 years, Jupiter and Saturn have been conjoining in Earth signs, except for 1980 or 1981. I can't remember which one that was. 1980 or 1981. They conjoined in Libra. And then in 2000, uh, that was when Jupiter and Saturn conjoined in Taurus. That was the last conjunction in Earth signs. This symbolized the first conjunction in Air signs. And uh, what this is known as is a triplicity shift. So whereas we were in the age of Earth, per se, over the past 200 years, and look what happened the past 200 years, the Industrial Revolution, um, capitalism, communism, different ways of organizing governments based off, you know, um, resources and wealth and things like that. And it's, it's pretty clear. I mean, just like the idea that we were in an age of earth, the age of material over the past 200 years makes sense. This Jupiter Saturn conjunction symbolized the beginning of the triplicity of air. Now I don't want to dive too deep into like what the triplicity of air is, but all you need to know, it's a major shift. Interestingly enough, it starts in Aquarius. I, if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard a little bit of my takes of Aquarius. And I always try to preface, if you have Aquarius placements, this isn't like about you, but the general um, archetype of Aquarius has a very specific theme. And that could be good or bad, depending on the situation. 
And I believe as of right now, we are seeing a lot of the worst sides of Aquarius. That is going to be, you know, um, control through uh, control of society, through technology, through information, through suppression, a top down sort of a thing. I mean, look at the glyph of Aquarius. It's literally like top bottom. And I've made plenty of videos talking about how the lockdown started when Saturn first ingressed into Aquarius. But this Jupiter Saturn Aquarius started this whole triplicity shift. So we're going into a whole new 200 year cycle where things are going to change drastically. We're going to be more focused on ideas. We're going to be more focused on information, on technology, and also people. Uh, each one of the air signs represents people. You have Aquarius, which is big groups, society. You have uh, Gemini, which is the twins, like conversing. And then you have Libra. You have relationships. So these are all very people oriented. And this is a 200 year thing. We're going to die in the middle of this, right? But this is kind of important to understand. Like if we're talking about regular elections uh, in the US, um, all of those have been during Jupiter Saturn conjunctions in earth signs. This um, conjunction, which was pretty much right after um, Biden was elected and right before January 6th, which the astrology of January 6th is really interesting given all of this. Um, we're in a new era here. And that's important to note because we're at the very beginning of a new era. So I say all this to say like, what is happening here in the future is not typical to what has happened in the past. And I like to take a very big macro you know, perspective and then shrink it down into the micro which is what we're going to do. But macro perspective first, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Now, I want to discuss the election of 2024. The reason why is I don't want to sit here and specifically make a claim about who's going to win. Um, there's a lot of evidence of, of both ways. I also don't know if I could sit here and say wholeheartedly that I think there's going to be a winner. I don't like the astrology of the next election. I don't like, I don't want to say I don't like the astrology of what um, comes after that, but what comes after this next election is Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, uh, Saturn, and Jupiter will all move into new zodiac signs in the first six months, six to seven months of the next election. What does that mean? When you like if we're just looking at astrology in a very symbolic way, every single outer planet, every single big planet in the sky moves into a new zodiac sign at the very beginning of something. At the minimum, that is symbolic of everything's changing, both mostly on a macro perspective, but even when you talk about Saturn and Jupiter, you're bringing it more down into a micro, uh, a microcosm. So I want to pull up the chart for the next election. And I don't want to just pull up the, the birth chart. I want to show you the things that lead up to it. Uh, you should subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But the reason I say that is um, I will be doing 2024 horoscopes here very soon. Um, and if you want to know what's going to be happening for you and your zodiac sign all through 2024, um, I go through them extremely thoroughly. Like I do not leave out any detail. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to get access to that. But the first thing I want to talk about is where are we at here? We're in October 19th of 2024. If I don't explicitly mention the day, you can just look at this little corner right here, right, right, right next to my, whoops, right next to my face. So there's two things that I think are really important to understand about this next election. Besides all of the outer planets changing signs, which we will get to. The first thing is Mars at this point in cancer is in shadow. This is October 19th. We get to... The first week of November here, so we're looking at about November 9th, Mars ingresses into Leo. Once Mars gets into Leo and we get to about December 7th, I think it's actually December, is it December 7th? Yeah, December 7th, Mars stations retrograde. Mars retrogrades are never a fun time. Mars le likes to go retrograde the very least out of every other planet. Not that any planet likes to go retrograde, but we're going to have this Mars retrograde. When we talk about fighting and we talk about conflict and we talk about, you know, Leo, very passionate, very, you know, courageous. The thing to understand, too, is it's going to go retrograde opposite Pluto and Aquarius. So there's a lot of tension and battle between, you know, 
if you want to talk about Pluto, like at the end of the day, Pluto is the dark powers of the underworld. And if you want to bring that into a more realistic sense of what does that mean? It's like, okay, the whole thing of what's going on in this world. Like if you think what they are telling you is what is happening, you are wrong. Everything is pretty much pre-planned. I don't necessarily believe in like, there's one person sitting at a table, but I do believe that all of these small little factions um, all play together, if that makes sense. Maybe not formally, but one, you know, section's negative, you know, or bad behaviors help another section's bad behaviors. And so they enable all each other. And how far you want to go, um, actually, it, shout out to Gordon White. I had him on my delineation podcast too. You, sh you guys should check that one out. But lately he's been talking about um, a, a, uh, a scale, not a scale, but um, a mixer. So like if you're like a, looking at a music studio, there's like the little volume buttons that go up and down. How much you want to believe this is all a conspiracy or not a conspiracy? That's up to you to bring it all up and down. But regardless, it's happening. So we're going to have this Mars retrograde. But the thing I want to bring up is Mercury stations retrograde. In fact, Mercury is in shadow during this election. I believe Mercury actually enters shadow on the day of the election. Mercury will be in detriment in Sagittarius. So Mercury, Mercury rules things like counting. It rules things like communication. It rules things like information. And it's in the worst sign it can be in. Maybe not the worst. That's Pisces. Um, not that Pisces is the bad sign. It just is for Mercury. But Mercury will not have any dignity. It will not do well here. And right after this election, Mercury is going to station retrograde. So we have a delay in communication. We have a delay in information. We have a rethinking of information. And it's in detriment. It's like we got bad information. Things aren't adding up here. And right after Mercury goes retrograde, Mars goes retrograde. So there's this real big slowdown and shift right after this election. Let's keep going forward. Mars will go opposite Pluto. Again, there's going to be a lot of strife here. Um, we keep going forward. And then once we get to about, you know, the end of December, Mercury will station retrograde. Mars will go opposite Pluto. And then Mars goes back into Cancer, which this is Mars' sign of fall. Mars does not like to be in Cancer. Mars is all about fights. Cancer is all about protection. So there's this really weird feeling here. Now, another interesting note is the nodes, which represent the eclipses, will shift at the very beginning of 2025. They will shift from Libra into Virgo in 2025. So as we move forward here, I want to do this real quick. I want to show you guys something. So by the end of January, Venus will enter shadow. The North Node will be on Neptune. And I don't have like a specific, oh, this is what that means. It's like, okay, Rahu, like the planet of super hyper consumption is on Neptune, the planet of illusion, uh, fantasy, mysticism, deception. So there's like this real big like what's going on feeling. Venus will station retrograde right after Mars stations direct. Mars stations direct um, at the end of February, and then right after that, Venus stations retrograde in Aries. Then right after that, Mercury will station retrograde in Aries with Venus. And why this is all important is if you've gotten a consultation with me in like the past year, I've really brought this to people's attention because look how much is happening at this part of the Zodiac. There will be eclipses here. So like, let's go back like a week. There's going to be an eclipse here in Pisces. We have Saturn in Pisces, North Node in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, and Venus and Mercury here in Aries. So, and again, Mercury is going to hit Venus and then go retrograde. There's all this attention right here at this part of the Zodiac. Then uh, Venus will go back into Pisces. And then right as Mercury, so check this out, on March 30th, March 29th, March 30th, look, Mercury's retrograde in Aries, Neptune's in Pisces, and then boom, the next day, Neptune's in Aries, Mercury's retrograde in Pisces. What's And I'm going to make a whole delineation episode just about this stuff that's going on here, because this is, this is the big deal, is this right here. Last time Neptune entered Aries was pretty much the day that the Civil War started in the United States back in the 1800s. Um, and I've talked a lot about that on a uh, other episodes, you know, other tidbits over on my Patreon. Um, but that's interesting. So now we have Pluto moving into Aquarius. Pluto goes into Aquarius in November of 2024. 
And that's the last time it will, uh, Pluto goes back into Capricorn twice um, <clears throat> in 2024. But when we get to November of 2024 and Pluto goes into Aquarius, it will not come back into Capricorn. It is there now. The Neptune goes into Aries, right? Mercury and Venus will both station direct pretty much on top of Saturn, on top of Rahu. So there's a real big shift here, right? Like Venus is going to be value shifts. Venus retrogrades are like very war oriented too. Like there's a lot of Native American history about that kind of stuff. Um, but also Mercury retrograde happening there. Venus stations direct. Then Mercury will go into Aries. <clears throat> and then Venus will come back into Aries and can join Neptune. Mars goes back into Leo. And this is now May of 2025. And then, of course, uh, here, where are we at now? Um, and then Saturn will go into Aries. And we have a Saturn-Neptune conjunction. I've talked a lot about this. In fact, I did a really thorough Saturn-Neptune conjunction video on my Patreon a couple years ago. So if you want to watch that, <clears throat> you're going to have to scroll a little ways down. I think I did it either in 20, I think I did it in 2021. But Saturn-Neptune conjunction, like the last one was 1989. That was when the USSR fell uh, and the Berlin Wall fell. Um, the one before that was 1953. That was the end of the Korean War. That was when Stalin died. Then the one before that was 1917. That was the Russian Revolution. That was, the, uh, wor that was World War I. So we have a lot of indicators of like big war changes. And, and again, in my opinion, this is a really big shift in Russia. And then, of course, and again, this is the first, this is June of 2025. So this is after this next presidential election. It doesn't matter who gets elected. It's that there's a huge, huge change here. And I, and I understand that, like, I'm making this video about Kamala Harris and if she's going to be president. But, like, I just want to give context to how wild after the next election things are. And I say that because I don't necessarily fully believe at this moment in September of 2023 if there is a winner of the next election if there even is an election there's a part of me and i'm allowed to change my opinion i'm allowed to change my mind i'm not here to make this video of like this is my definitive statement i think if kamala harris is going to be president i've got dates for you guys of when i do believe that's going to happen but at the end of the day i don't think that there's there's an argument here that <clears throat> there's so much happens in between that maybe there isn't even an election and there's a lot of people talking about that and that they could even use war as an excuse to go into to uh, you know, suspend the election, which the, this is all war stuff, guys. Um, NATO is probably going to get involved with the Russia thing. Um, where it goes out from there gets a little bit more complicated, whether China, you know, invades Taiwan and how that goes, that all gets really, you know, that's like not seeing the forest through the trees. Um, that get, all gets a little bit complicated here, but Saturn goes in and then Jupiter goes into cancer by June. And then what is it? Um, I think it's in July. Uranus goes into Gemini. The last two times Uranus went into Gemini was World War II and the last civil war here in America. So we have two major planetary indicators of civil war here in America. I don't necessarily believe that there's going to be like, like again, like the Mason-Dixon line, North versus South. I tr I'm more on the page that I think whatever happens with this next election is going to start the formal breakup of the United States very similar to the breakup of Yugoslavia, um, you know, everything kind of becoming its own little country. And I think because everything's so politically divided and I think because each state like there's no, you know, again, it's not north versus south. It's like Idaho and Montana will have a, a lot of agreements with Texas, but there's no land. And, you know, maybe Texas to Oklahoma to the Dakotas and Wyoming connects them. But I just don't know how that's going to look. So anyway, that's all the things that are happening here. So we have all of that as context. I say all that to say, no matter what happens in this next election, major things are changing, no matter who wins. I mean, I hope, I pray to God RFK wins, and maybe this is all good change because I think RFK Jr. is the only person that can actually save this country. Um, now, let's go to Joe Biden's chart. Where's good old, there we go. So Joe Biden's chart. Number one, he's turning, what, 82? Uh, this is September of 2023. He is turning 81 years old. 81. Come on. I don't think, I mean, if you've been living under a rock, then you may not know. He's 81, um, pretty much has dementia, can't think for himself. 
in my opinion, it's kind of elder abuse. Um, uh, same thing with Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Fian, uh, Fian, Diane Feinstein. Um, but I want to show you guys this. Looking at his chart, I want to show you the uh, the day I predicted his death in 2022 was because he was um, in an eighth house year. So if you do annual perfections, he was in an eighth house year, which is about death. And his eighth ruler of death is in the sixth house of, you know, ill health. That's how he's going to die. Like, that is what's promised in the chart. He's probably going to go to bed and hang out in bed, get hospice care. I'm sure presidents don't get hospice care. But that's how he's going to die. He's going to die of old age and just kind of falling ill and like that. He's not going to get assassinated. He's not going to – none of that stuff. That's how he's going to die. And in I think it was July 6th of 2022, Mars conjoined his moon. Mars rules his 12th house of, like, you know, hospitals and, you know, falling ill. And I thought Mars conjoining his eighth ruler was like, oh, he's going to die. That was when he got COVID, though. Which I'm a little proud of, okay? Uh, sorry, I got to flex when I do get things somewhat right. and But I do get things wrong all the time. So he's super, super old. We had the Moon-Mars conjunction. So now let's talk about what's going on for him after his birthday of this year of 2023. He will be going into a 10th house year. And if you're not familiar with annual perfections, how this works is whatever house you land on, the themes of that house become the main topic and main theme for you that year. 10th house is career, public notoriety, legacy, fame, reputation, like all of the big public stuff. So it's a very public big year for Joe Biden. Uh, second thing is whatever planet rules that house, that planet becomes activated in the birth chart and the natal promise of that planet gets told. Mercury rules Virgo. We have Mercury combust in his 12th house. Now, what's kind of hard <clears throat> about like, and, and, if, and again, if you have like 12th house placements or like rough placements, this always gets a little bit um, complicated. Because I can sit here and say, oh, he, a planet in his 12th house is getting activated. He might, you know, you know, fall ill or something like that. <clears throat> because he has Mars, Mercury, Sun, and Venus all in Scorpio in the 12th, most of his life has been activations in the 12th, right? Which is also kind of funny given all the secret stuff that he has behind closed doors. But anyway, there's something about what I could formally say about this is Mercury rules information. Mercury's in Scorpio, probably pretty secretive. Um, it's combust the sun, so there's a little bit of like uncertainty, um, unclarity, but it is in the 12th house. And just the older and older this guy gets, the worse and worse this 12th house stuff is looking. The third thing, next year, April 20th of 2024, is kind of like one of the big highlights of 2024, and that is the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So I want to show you guys this. So when we look at April 20th, 2024, so if you're not familiar already, this inside chart is Joe Biden's. This outside chart is the current transits. The current transit is right here in April of 2024, and we have a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. This is both really exciting and also, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think this is when you're going to see the central bank digital currency stuff roll out. Um, I don't think like, is, again, Taurus is like wealth and value. Uranus is there. You know, Uranus went into Taurus in like, you know, 2017. This was like all the Bitcoin stuff and all of that. I think the Jupiter Uranus will, uh, you know, signify that. But because Joe Biden is a Sag rising, um, he is ruled by the planet Jupiter and is in his sixth house of ill health. It's been there since May of 2023. And it's funny that that's actually come up more and more and more. How is his health doing? Well, it conjoins Uranus, the planet of instability and sudden things happening and, and big changes, right? So I would argue there's definitely an argument. This is Jupiter. This is a good planet. Like Jupiter conjoining Uranus is like maybe all of a sudden his health comes, you know, back. But I doubt that because if you've watched my videos – especially if you've gotten a consultation with me, I have learned to totally temper out my Jupiter predictions. It's super easy to be like, Jupiter's the best, it's gonna be amazing. But Jupiter is both, like if you read traditional astrology books, ancient astrology books, Jupiter rules both life and death. So this idea that um, Jupiter conjoining Uranus could be, I, and again, I don't wanna say sudden death because I'm not trying to make this video be like, oh, here's my exact, exact prediction. But I just wanna give you guys context and have you think for yourself how this is gonna go down. But Jupiter's gonna conjoin Uranus in his sixth house. But why is that important, Cameron? Because the third thing in annual perfections is whenever a transiting planet hits the activated planet, something significant happens. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is exactly opposite as activated Mercury. So this is his 10th ruler of career in the 12th house, again, of like hidden enemies, isolation, alienation, self-sabotage. 
and there's this real sudden change happening in his sixth house of work and health and routine and also pets. I don't know if you guys heard about this, like his dog that he has has been like biting a bunch of people. So maybe that comes up. I don't know. But something sudden is happening around this time. So I think that's important to note. The other thing is when we get to, well, let's, I want to take a, another look at his chart real quick. Because Joe Biden is a Sag rising, he is ruled by the planet Jupiter. And where's Jupiter? It is exalted in Cancer in the eighth house. Um, there's a lot of ways to interpret this. Um, his eighth ruler is in the sixth house, so that's how he's going to die. He's just going to, you know, be old and die. Like it's not going to be, you know, anything super wild or crazy. The context of it, if he's still president, though, of course, is wild and crazy. But his ascendant ruler is in the eighth house. So there's something very notable about his death. That is what the NATO promise says. Also, there's a lot of access to shared resources, which is interesting given his whole Hunter Biden stuff. But this to me is saying there's something very notable about his death. And okay, if you have like your Senate ruler in the eighth, that could be true for you. But this is a little different just because this is a president and like he's been in the Senate for like 40 years. Of course, his death would be more notable than anybody else's just in basic terms. But the other part of this is right when his ascendant ruler goes into uh, – so his ascendant ruler is in the eighth. Then we have this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And this, by the way, let me just also be very upfront. When If you get a consultation from me, I'm pretty good about like letting you know, hey, if I see like a death involved somewhere. Um, and there's certain factors that I like that like sometimes if you get a consultation with me, depending on what's going on, I might be like, there might be a death. There might be just some complications. Like, you know, we'll come to see. But there are certain things where I'm like, hey, you might prepare for, you know, this person dying or this person passing away or just expecting a death in your immediate area. I don't see too many factors about that here. Meaning, I don't necessarily think he might die right here. There's a few more things I want to see for me to be like, oh, he's going to die. But the idea of falling ill suddenly complications from that that sounds a little bit more up uh, that sounds a little bit more um um within context of this and then the last thing i want to bring up is when we get to about june of 2024 his ascendant ruler jupiter goes into detriment so the ascendant ruler of the body so like the ascendant literally rules the body it will be in detriment in his seventh house. So that might be, you know, again, complications in like relationships, but I'm just more looking at his ascendant ruler is in detriment. His body is not doing good. And again, if you're like 30 or 40, I don't think this would matter as much for you, but it's a little bit different when you're like 81, you know, leader of the free world, um, possibly getting us into World War III and also has dementia. Does that make sense? Um, so his ascendant ruler goes into detriment. There's a few things I look at there where, again, I'm not saying like, oh, yeah, this is exactly when he's going to die. But things are looking shaky for Joe Biden starting April, May, and June of 2024. Now, let's go to Kamala Harris's chart. And again, why talk about what Kamala Harris is ready for in terms of presidency without looking at Joe Biden, right? We have to see if something is going to happen with Joe Biden first. But now I do want to take a look at Kamala Harris's chart. Um... She's got a lot of interesting things going on. Let's take a look. There we go. Well, I need a little sip. Okay. A lot going on here. Number one. Um, number one is, again, what she said. Why would she say this? Why would she say this? This is a grooming, a warming up exercise to say, hey, she's probably going to be president. Now, there's some people that say, oh, and again, also, if you pay attention to any of the politics, like the DNC is trying to get rid of Biden. They're trying to figure out what to do. There's no one else there. Some people are saying Gavin Newsom might run. Um, and I, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. My, the, the weird thing about Gavin Newsom is – him and Kamala hate each other. They hate each other. Um, so them on a ticket together is kind of like really wild to think about because um, they do not like each other. But this is not a statement to take lightly. 
This is there's a reason they are saying this. They do not say anything that they do not need to say. And don't get me wrong, Kamala Harris is known for saying shit she doesn't really need to say. Um, but I, I found this notable and starking. That's why I wanted to make this video because, like I said on my last delineation, I don't really always have content for this all the time. <clears throat> but I thought this was relevant to bring up. So the big thing I'm looking at here is she's turning about 60, uh, or is it 57? So she's going to be turning 59 this October. Um, when you're about 59, 60, you get your second Saturn return, but you also get your Jupiter return with it. And why is that important? Well, Saturn's on her midheaven. So her Saturn returns have a lot to do with her career and her work and her reputation and her legacy. Also, her midheaven is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter in the 12th house. I think it was Chris Brennan that said like a lot of presidents end up having 12th house stuff, which I find a little interesting. The idea is like they're always behind closed doors. Everything's kind of hidden from out of sight. Makes sense. Uh, but Jupiter rules her 10th house and her Jupiter return happens at that same time that Joe Biden has that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction opposite his Mercury. So around April, May, and June of 2024. So that's kind of a bigger deal. Now... What's also really important to know is Kamala Harris has been the president of the United States before for about five minutes, uh, not a five minutes, like an hour. Kamala Harris was the president of the United States because Joe Biden was getting some sort of surgery. And I want to show you the date of that. So Kamala Harris has technically been the first you know, black woman president that we've had. That happened on this day, November 19th, 2021. Whoops, there we go. So that's already happened, and it was about for an hour. Why is this important? Because if she's already been the president for about an hour, or maybe an hour and a half, whatever it was, then let's look at this chart, and let's look at the details of it, and let's see if there's anything coming up in the future that might also show that. And you know what's funny? You know what's so funny about this? Okay, check this out. This is what's really wild to me. This happened on an eclipse. So this was the first eclipse in Scorpio and Taurus. Okay. So this all happened during an eclipse. Why is that a big deal? Well, for one, it's a fucking eclipse. So that's kind of notable. But two, in the ancient times, and this is what's so fucking wild to me about this. In ancient times, <clears throat> they were so um, superstitious that during an eclipse, they would like, because eclipses can rule like sudden death of the king or, you know, a king being dethroned and, and stuff like that. What they used to do was they used to make like a, a sham king. Like the king would, you know, uh, re relinquish his crown to like a farmer or like a pig. And this pig would be king for five minutes until the eclipse is over. Then they like slaughter the pig and then the regular king would come back. So funny to me that during this eclipse, we had a similar situation, not calling Kamala Harris a pig, but there's other politicians that deserve that label more. Um, but the idea that a president swap happened during this is like biblical, like that, hap that, that was an ancient thing and we see it happening right now. I don't know. If it's on purpose, I kind of doubt it's on purpose because when things like this, it's like they just happen. It's, this is how cool astrology is. You don't have to plan anything. Just how the timing works. So we know that she's been the president before on Eclipse. That's really important. So let's go back to her chart. You know why? Because she was born exactly on a full moon in Aries. Why is that important? Well, over the next year and a half, till the very end of 2024, beginning of 2025, her, the eclipses will be on her luminaries. Now the luminaries are like, again, like <clears throat> lighting things up, like, like what you see, right? That can be career oriented. That can be, oh, by the way, actually I wanted to mention this. So it wasn't exact, but Kamala Harris just announced the whole, I'm ready to be president on September 10th. <clears throat> or at least that's what this article is. Oh, no, maybe not September 10th. Um, do, 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 do. It was recently. It was like in the past week. Saturn was on her midheaven when she said that. I am ready to take over responsibility is what she said 
with Saturn on her midheaven. Isn't that crazy? That's wild to me. The other part of it is it's her eighth house ruler of death on her midheaven. So the kind of idea of like, this is the context. So I'm going to go into this. So um, back to the eclipses. Her luminaries are going to be getting eclipsed over this next year and a half. Which is like, it's one thing when like one luminary, like your sun is getting eclipsed, but it's like both her sun and her moon. So the luminary, like identity, like how people see you, um, your personality, like all of that is, is getting major, major shifts for one starting this October on her birthday, but for the next year and a half. And so we're going to go over those dates. Um, and when we look at, so this is September, oh, this is still zoomed in. When we look at September of 2023, I want to zoom in right here real quick. Uranus, so this planet of ups and downs, you know, massive change randomly, when we get into 2024, is going to be on her Jupiter, which is her 10th ruler. There's a lot here. She's in her Jupiter Saturn return. All that has to do with career stuff. Like she's having some major career shifts no matter what. And I've said a lot about this. And this is another reason why I was like, oh, she's having all these career shifts. Something's going to happen to Joe Biden. Like, what else would happen to her? I don't think they're going to take her out of the VP spot. I think what would be easier is saying, all right, you know, good night, Uncle Joe Biden. You know, time to go to sleep. Let's make Kamala president for five minutes and either get rid of her that way and install someone like Gavin Newsom or um, just keep her there because she's a good puppet. Um, but that's all what's going on. So now let's talk about eclipses. We're going to go over the next few eclipses, Okay. So the reason why is if there was going to be a time when Kamala Harris becomes the president, I believe it's going to be during an eclipse. And I have one eclipse in mind, but we're going to go over all of them just so we have a good idea. And again, take this with a grain of salt. If you want to believe me, believe me. If you, want, if you don't want to, I'm fine with that. I just think this situation that – president's almost ill and Kamala Harris is talking like I think this is worth talking about and so I want to show you these eclipses I think if Kamala Harris were to become the next president I think it's going to be on an eclipse given the precedent for that it could totally happen on another day it could totally happen I'm not here to say that's concrete but just given that it already did happen and that was exactly on an eclipse why not look at the eclipses as our first clue okay so um we have our first pseudo eclipse um, here on September 29th. This is an eclipse. It's, so it's not actually an eclipse. Um, if you were on my Patreon, you heard me rant, rant about this because this whole time I thought it was an eclipse. But when I looked it up on time and date, it's technically not an eclipse. So we have our first illumination in Aries and Libra with the nodes in Aries and Libra. It's really close to an eclipse in my opinion. Um, but it's not. So it's hard to say. So I don't know how I feel about this, but let's go to October 14th, which would be the next eclipse after that. So October 14th is the solar eclipse in Libra. So what's interesting about this is um, if we look at Kamala Harris's chart, this is right on her sun and her Mercury. Mars will be on her Mercury. So what do I think of that? I don't know. Maybe she says, like I think Tim Tim Dillon has a bit on Kamala Harris. Like she tops in like she talks in like gypsy curses. Um, so maybe she says some stupid funny shit like around this time. Maybe take it with a grain of salt. But the fact that she gets this first solar eclipse over her son, um, which does rule her her third house of communication, so that might be kind of interesting. But okay, that one's kind of interesting. Eclipse on her son. We're not going to worry too much about it. But then we get to October twenty eighth. And October 28th, I didn't, I'm so, I feel so bad because I kind of fucked up this whole year when I did my 2023 year ahead overviews. I didn't realize this is still technically an eclipse. So we still have one more eclipse in Scorpio and Taurus uh, here at the end of October. Now, what's interesting to me is this is a Mercury-Mars conjunction. And if we look at Joe Biden's chart, uh, he has that Mercury-Mars conjunction in Scorpio. So there's a lot of similarities here. And this is, of course, a an eclipse, pretty much like on his moon. Joe Biden is the outside chart in this in this situation. So that's really interesting to me. 
We have one more eclipse in Scorpio and Taurus. This is also Kamala Harris's sixth house and 12th house as well because they're, you know, opposite. He's a Sag rising. She's a Gemini rising. So that's an interesting one to me. And you know what gets even more interesting is on November 4th, Saturn's going to station direct. Why that's important is, again, Saturn was on her midheaven when she said, I'm ready. I don't think she is, but we get the point. So, but Saturn was retrograde. So then Saturn stations direct and it will hit her midheaven again. So now we fast forward. We're going to go a couple weeks here. Um, it's November. Uh, do, 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 do. Saturn will hit her midheaven again around Christmas. So what's hard about saying anything about that is like, I don't know what's going to be happening during Christmas. I'm pretty sure like most of like, you know, Congress and the president, they're like out on, you know, holiday or vacation or whatever. Um, so that's pretty interesting though. So we'll, we'll, we definitely want to make a little note for about Christmas Eve, what's going to be going on around that time. So we move forward, we move forward uh, and we get to about March. Oh, by the way, you know, I had a comment on one of my weeklies about this little action going on here about COVID and stuff like that, that we have Pluto going into Aquarius and then Mars like conjoins Pluto in Aquarius and how that was a very like Mars conjoining Saturn in Aquarius was like the day of lockdowns. So this is, this is February 13th. I think that is a day to pay attention to the whole COVID narrative stuff and the whole inoculation narrative. This would be really interesting to pay attention to. Um, but let's keep going because I want to get to March. We're going to do March 24th here. So March 24th, we get our first uh, lunar eclipse in Aries. Now, eclipses are, again, times of significant change, of big shifts. This one to me is interesting. Um, I, I don't want to say it's interesting. It's the next one. So this is this starts off the eclipses. But let's look at April 8th. April 8th, this eclipse terrifies me. <laughs> it kind of terrifies me. It's a solar eclipse. Mercury is retrograde, but the ruler of this eclipse is Mars, and we have Mars conjoining Saturn. Mars conjoining Saturn was the thing that happened during the lockdown, and then it happened again in twenty, the very beginning of 2022. And while we didn't have lockdowns here in America, there was a huge like second or third lockdown in China. Like Mars Saturn conjunctions do tell a story of like diseases and plagues. Like I think the Ebola outbreak um, back in like 2014 was a Mars Saturn conjunction. But the fact that we have an eclipse, like a total solar eclipse, and if I'm not mistaken, hold on, let me look this up. Um, I think this is over America. Let me go to my. Every astrologer should be using Time Nomad. And I mean, my, my bad, Time Nomad, yes. But like for websites, astro.com and timeanddate.com. So look at this. April 8th, 2024, we get that next uh, eclipse over America. And if I'm not mistaken, let's go to, hold on, North America. There we go. Go. Whoops. Let's just do, okay, so go um april 8th 2024 hold on let's just do this um so this is the next great north american eclipse i'm just trying to see if it goes over washington dc it doesn't look like it goes over, but goddamn, is it close? So interestingly enough, that this eclipse happens over America, and it's the Mars Saturn conjunction. This is not. This is a big deal. Um, the last uh, Great American Eclipse is like the whole Trump thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the eclipse that went over in so the day that the uh, article about COVID-19 and everyone being like, what's this weird new disease in China? I'm pretty sure there was an eclipse. And I, I got to remember this. 
either it went over Wuhan or it went over um, uh, Iran and uh, um, Italy, which were like some of the biggest countries that were f hit first. December 2019 eclipse path don't allow. Um, no, it didn't go over Wuhan. It did go over Saudi Arabia. I remember seeing that picture. Um, God, there was something about that eclipse, and I can't remember it now. So I'm looking at it right now. But anyway, so this eclipse to me is probably the most telling one. If something was going to happen, I think it's going to be on this eclipse. But then let's just go to the next six months eclipse after that. And again, this is all when Jupiter conjoins your. And this is like, again, why this is important is this is right before Jupiter conjoins Uranus. This is right before, um, what was the other thing? Um, it's right before the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So that's important to me. So let's now get to October, which is our next set of, no, stop. I hate when I hit that button on Astro Gold. So then this is the next eclipse after that. Um, this eclipse involves Mercury, but it will be trending Mars. Um, it's, it's it well, not trending Mars, it'll be squaring Mars. Um, this one isn't the biggest deal to me, but it is an eclipse right before the next election. And then we get to October 17th, which this eclipse is interesting because this is like right on Kamala Harris's um, uh, uh, luminaries. My issue with this eclipse, though, is it's pretty far away from the node. So, you know, I'm not even sure if this qualifies as an eclipse. And this is right before Pluto goes back into Aquarius full time. And then, of course, by this point, Mars is in shadow, about ready to go retrograde. This is like a month, a couple weeks before the election. <clears throat> so with all of that being said, two people to pay attention to is Gavin Newsom. Um, Gavin Newsom's got some crazy stuff going on. I think I have his chart. Um, hold on. EFG. Gavin Newsom. Here we go. That was quick. Uh, Gavin Newsom's got a couple of interesting things going on in his chart. It's his Saturn return coming up here soon. And I did a, a deep dive on his chart and his history. And it was like, he got some city position. Like, like he was just kind of like a city worker. Like he was never really that big of a deal until, um, I don't know. He won some, some ra random office for like the city. Um, and that happened in 1996 during his Saturn return. So his Saturn return definitely starts in 2025. Um, It'll probably be more potent in 2026. So I think if he's not important for this election, he will be for the next one. Um, but I want to end on America's favorite person. Let's talk about Donald Trump. So um, <sighs> here's my thing. This isn't so much about my opinion of Donald Trump, but there's two things that are going to happen here. I genuinely believe if he is not in prison, if he is um, like, let's say if he's not in prison and they're running Joe Biden and Kamala Harris against Donald Trump, he, he's going to win. I don't. And if he doesn't win, then it was probably a rigged election. And I know some people are going to come at my throat for saying, oh, my God, our elections are so safe and so accurate. Stop. Yeah, just like, you know, there's some other things that were safe and effective. And you what 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 things has this country not lied about to its citizens? Like, you know, weapons of mass destruction, how we killed over a million Iraqis, and you know, we're in Syria, we're in Yemen, we're in um, you know, we were in Afghanistan, we were in Iraq, um, you know, all of the coups that we led oh, for the one in Ukraine and also all of the ones in South America, and how we put crack in the streets from the FBI. And it, it's just the the idea that like I'm not sitting here and being like, oh, this is exactly how things are rigged and elect, uh, like rigged and you know they're lying to us. It's, I think at the end of the day, I think it's you're given the past few years, you are more than likely going to be correct, leaning on the side of caution of whatever the U.S. government says, because everything the U.S. government says has been wrong. Just given like a six month time window, so uh, I think if I think if Donald Trump does win and doesn't have like 14th Amendment issues or he's not in prison or something like that, um. I think he will run. I think he will win. But I also don't think they're going to allow that to happen. And this is another reason why I like don't really believe in this next election. Um, I don't really believe there's going to be a winner. I don't really believe it's going to happen. But this is my opinion right now as of September of 2023. That might change. There's a lot going on right now. 
things are still really up in the air. But here's why. There are like three things. Like number one, Jupiter is going to be on Donald Trump's midheaven during all of this stuff. So when we just talk about, you know, prominence, good luck with career stuff, Jupiter is going to be on his midheaven all during, you know, that time that I think there's going to be that eclipse and Kamala Harris becomes president in April of 2024. So that will be interesting. But don't get me wrong. Like I've said before, Jupiter's not always a good planet. But if you're not familiar with zodiacal releasing, zodiacal releasing is another timing technique astrologers use to, you know, figure out what's going on with somebody. Um, we're looking at career topics right now. And uh, zodiacal releasing is really complicated. It's not easy like animal perfections. But long story short, we're looking at career. And how zodiacal releasing works, it's like, it, it's like okay, there's um, level one, level two, level three, level four. These levels are like, if your life was like a book, level one is like the big fat sections of your book. Like you only got a couple. Level two is like the chapters within each one of those sections. And then level three is like the paragraphs within that and so on and so forth. So we're going to look at level two for just a moment. We're going to get to level one because that's the most important. Like level one is the most important. Level two is the second most important. And uh, again, the list goes on. Actually, let's start with level one. I want you guys to notice something. So what we're looking for in Zodiac releasing are these plus signs. The plus signs represent peak activity period. That could be good or bad, depending on the chart. Given Trump's chart, like what you want to do is you just want to look at the planets that are angular to those, to the Leo, for example, so Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus. Mars is there. So I would like on paper qualify that as bad. However, he knows how to use his Mars and Leo. Like, <clears throat> His arrogance and his pride like really works for him in a lot of ways. So it's hard for me to just say, oh, it's going to be quote unquote bad. But on paper, it's not good. But there's some things that kind of change my opinion on that. So number one, we're looking at these plus signs. When is the peak of his career? He had a peak in his career from 26 to 34. And again, this is the, arguably the most famous person in the world. The most famous person of the 21st century is Donald Trump. Billionaire, TV, movie star, fucking president. Like, Everyone in the world knows who Donald Trump is. Name someone that who that everyone else in the world knows. He hits a peak career period April of 2025. Now that's 2025. That's after the election when all those other changes are going on. So that's interesting. But the peak of his career, the peak of his legacy, the peak of it all, he hasn't even hit yet. In fact, he started like this buildup period in 2000, which is, I think was like the first time he ran for president, but he hits the peak here. So something very big is happening to him. That might even just be, he goes like, I'm kind of wondering, like a part of me is wondering if like he gets indicted for all this stuff. Like if this is when he goes to prison, because that would also be really interesting. But all I could sit here and say is April 20th, by the way, oh, that, that's April 20th, 2024, never mind. Um, so something major is happening to him April of 2025. I wonder if that's when he goes to prison. If he does, I don't believe, I mean, like, again, there's a, a, a thing here in Colorado where they're trying to take Trump off the ballot because any, because of the 14th amendment, any president, you know, you know, that has insurrection charges can't run. He's not being charged for insurrection, which also he didn't do. Um, but anyway, when we look at level two, so he's still in this level uh, one cancer period right now. So let's look at level two. I want to show you guys something. So when he ran for president, it was about this time in 2015. He was in a peak period in Taurus. And like I said, the peak periods, whether it's Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, or Leo, um, because they hold his malefic, would on paper be bad. But between September of 2015 and 2016 is when he ran for president, and he fucking won. Then March of 20, and then he then he had this loosening of the bonds thing, which I I just found out about this. Like I just realized that this happened and I need to do more research on like what exactly that was. But then we get to March of 2020. This was like right when the lockdowns began. And that was a big part of his, you know, career. Cause everyone's like, you know, Trump, COVID was Trump's fault some fucking how. Um, but November of 2024, he hits that same peak period of when he ran for president and pretty much like won. Now the uh, election wasn't until the end of 2016, but I find this to be a very interesting period is the period for Donald Trump to pay attention to is going to be from November of 2024 until April of 2025. And then like beyond that. But like, this is kind of an interesting 
timeline here. So my thing is, I, and why I think he might win is simply because of this. Like he has some huge, huge activations going on. It doesn't matter if you're like on team Biden. He does not have the support that Trump does. I think the only way that they would circumnavigate that is finding a way to not have Trump be involved. And my, in my opinion, this is, this is what looks like to me is like, why wouldn't they just suspend the election? And a way that they would do that is like, oh, by the way, NATO needs, uh, you know, American troops to be in U Ukraine. And now we're going to go to war because we're in war times. We're just going to suspend the election. That's just what I kind of see. But, you know, I know this video is supposed to be about Kamala Harris and her chart stuff, but it's like none of we can't even begin to talk about Kamala Harris and all of her stuff without understanding the context um, of everything else going on. So why I wanted to make this video was for one, to explain a little bit more of that context, but like, well, again, I, I wanted to make this video to talk about, um, you know, is Kamala Harris gonna be president? She already was, there's a few dates I'm interested in. And, and, I, and oh, I, I forgot to mention one fucking super important thing. The reason I also think Joe Biden is not going to make it is he was elected during a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. It's called um, – there's like some stupid name for it. Um, it's like uh, – let me look it up. You guys already probably know what I'm talking about where it's like presidents elected under Jupiter-Saturn conjunction get assassinated. Jupiter-Saturn conjunction election curse. Uh, people call it um, – uh, Texume's curse. It's I, I know I'm botching that name, but the idea is if you haven't heard of this before, it's like every president um, that gets elected with a Jupiter Saturn conjunction like dies or gets assassinated. JFK was a big one. Uh, Ronald Reagan was assassinated. He wasn't assassinated. He didn't die, but he was. There was an attempt. Um, George W. Bush. And I mean, also it's like if you go through every single um, president that that has happened during a Jupiter Saturn conjunction. Uh, George, uh, George W. Bush, um, he was not like assassinated, like a bullet didn't go, but someone did throw a shoe at him, which I'm like, I kind of count that. I kind of count that as at least an attempt. Um, so part of me thinks, okay, Jupiter Saturn conjunction, there's a history of like presidents not surviving their full term during that. Ronald Reagan was a good one. JFK, um, all of that stuff. There's like a history behind it. You could look it up for yourself, but that's another big reason. I don't believe Joe Biden's going to make it, but anyway. He's also 81. He's also very old. Uh, I think yesterday I read that they're trying to do an impeachment inquiry about him. So I say all this to say, this is what I think. I think if they're going to, I think if Kamala's, Kamala Harris is going to come out with a statement that's saying, oh, I'm ready to be president, I think they're doing that for a reason. So I think we should believe them. And all I can do is say, okay, well, if that's going to be a thing, let's look at what dates that that might happen. And in my opinion, I'm looking at April of 2024. From the beginning to the end of April of 2024, I think is when all this is going to happen. So, like usual, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comments below. Maybe it does happen. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not really too invested in being right about this. Although, if I am right, I'm fucking like totally going to tout it. It's just um, we're in really interesting times. And so I think, I, what, again, I wanted to do this video to give you guys like the context of everything here. Because the astrology for the next at least two years is very, very, very wild. Um we are certainly living in interesting times. So with that being said, uh, like the video, let me know. Um, and yeah, let me know what your comments are below and I will see you next time.